Tupac. You are. You are a musician. <laughs> All right. <laughs> welcome to the Just Really Old. Kevin. We are here with Amy Coelho in the house tonight. And we have my special guest host, Jonathan Rayburn. We also have Amy Coelho's husband. So we're going to have an exciting time, a great show. Stick around and we'll be right back. We sh- are we gonna? Oh 
it back on, so hang on a second. All right, we're good. Here we go. Here we go. All right, welcome to Legit with Kevin Witt. We have a great show lined up for you today. It's going to be amazing. Um, before we get dive into dream interpretation and the topic of that and everything, I want to introduce you all to Legit with Kevin Witt. So what this show is about, we're going to be meeting every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure that you tune in to the show and the point of this show is to discuss how to live with morals in a postmodern society and controversial topics. So what that means is how do we live as Christians in the world we live in today and hold true to our Christian values and morals and still be able to function in society? And how do we deal with these um, controversial topics that come up in the news or, you know, because our nation is so divided right now. And so how can we come together in our differences and and still be able to live amongst each other and love each other? But while we may not disagree on certain things, we can still love each other and get along. So mm. that is what the show's about. That's the point of the show. That's my heart behind creating the show. So um, yeah, tune in every week from 6 to 8 p.m. And we will, yeah, talk about all that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, and like, and, you know, so, yeah, we will, and some do, sometimes it will be getting very controversial, very heated discussions. Um, so if you want drama, <laughs> you will get it. <laughs> But that's not the point of it, you know. So um, today we have my special guest co-host, Jonathan Rayburn, in Hi. the house. Jonathan, why don't you introduce yourself? Like, talk about, <laughs> like, what what is your... Talk about how great you are. ...background, and yes, how wonderful are you? Well, since I'm not the most talkative person, this is going to be a challenge for me. Well... Uh, what are you get trying ready. to get out of me? Like, what... I want to know, know, like... We need to know how like, awesome you are. Your testimony, maybe, like... Where, what you've been through in life and where are you at right now and what brings you and why are you here, here? all right so like, like really you want to know like what my walk of the lord looks like it's like yeah, essentially sure. you're saying yeah, in a nutshell yeah, yeah, yeah. um my walk with the lord is like I'm, I'm always i feel like i'm always on the outside of um where the people of god are gathering like i'm always on the outside looking in and um for years that's something i tried to fix i was always trying to find community and I realized it's only been in the last few years I've realized I was God separating me, preparing me for something different. So that's that's good. That's, that's where I am. I'm, I really don't take much part prophetic. in church. I don't know about that. We, s- we tend to peculiar, that, peculiar, yes, peculiar. It might have been called weird, but I'd say <laughs> definitely <laughs> weird. He definitely. calls you peculiar. I call Not it like prophetic. All kinds of weird convers- <laughs> weird topics. Prophets so. tend to be Sweet. pushed to the outside <clears throat> of the camp. And like, why Jonathan, like, you know, actually Jonathan did not say, hey, Kevin, can I be a co-host? I said, Jonathan, I would love for you to be a co-host. Oh, wow. And he said, I'd be down, but <laughs> we got to talk about the logistics first, but. Which we like, haven't done yet. Yes. <laughs> Here you are. This happened last yeah. night. <laughs> yeah. But why, yeah. why, why, like, why are you interested in doing this? Like, what is your heart? What are you hoping people get out of your vo- voice what do you have to bring to the table we for all just people? want drama <laughs> what do i have we want tv i'm just kidding <laughs> i like i like to know scripture like i want to know that i know that i know scripture and if something isn't scripturally based i will challenge it you know and so that's that's where i come from i oh, want to like, scripture and um and i have a very different understanding of scripture than most christians for sure that should be so um, that should be very dramatic you're with john paul jackson right what's yes for many years i mm-hmm. i want john, john paul jackson is one of the few ministers out there i have a, a great deal of respect for oh, okay um as a matter of fact he pastored my church when i was a kid he was at trinity fellowship and uh-huh. later became shallow house in fort worth yeah yeah wow. and so um and I have I've had a little bit of a history with them, but yeah, yeah, I have a little yeah. bit of history too, huh? <laughs> yeah. We have a little bit of history. Well, well um, oh, sorry, sorry to cut y'all off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> welcome back to your show, Kevin. <laughs> so I was trying to pull up Amy's bio, and I cannot pull it up because 
I cannot it's too pull long. It up. The internet's not working for me. So yeah, I'm having a lot of difficulties today. I tried to go to Kinko's to print off everything you I You tried for to be show. logistic. It just yes. didn't work out, did it? I tried to have good time management and be that kind of a host that one. Yeah. We're gonna be host. that kind of but show. Unfortunately, we're just playing it by ear today. <laughs> And it is the first time back in season two of Legit with Kevin Witt. So yeah, I'm excited to be here on the first one. I was I'm I'm honored. I had a great time last one. Yeah, yeah, we had a great show. You're a great interviewer. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm not able to pull up her, like I said, her bio. So I'm going to ask you, Amy, to tell me a little bit about yourself. Amy has her husband here, Robert Coelho, and um, so tell me about yourself. Yeah. And then, like, how you got into dream interpretation yeah. and all that. Yeah, start at the beginning. Yeah, start yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Well, I've been in ministry for well over two decades, so that's going to be a long beginning. <laughs> but um, Robert and I were uh, with Vineyard for a number, number of years. And um, we actually, funny enough, uh, I actually boycotted Streams Ministries when it came to our church because um, – uh, they were charging $240. You remember this? They were charging $240 to come learn how to hear from God. And in my rebellious like, ways, I, for 20. No, yeah. I said, me, I'll teach you. I said, grab your Bible. I'll teach you how to hear from God for free in the hallway. So I had a little bit of a rebellious lawless spirit I needed to get rid of. Um, but I, you know, my husband uh, was attending the conference cause he was pastoring at the church and uh, I refused to go, but he said, no, you're going to get up here and hear this. And when I did, well, I had a dream the night before about um, a white-haired man coming into uh, on a con- in a conference, and this white-haired man had opened a white notebook, and he called me out of the conference, and he said, you will travel the world teaching the prophetic word of God. And it went into me like lightning, and I bent over, and, you know, I was the white haired man, I could only think of that he kind of looked like John Wimber, but kind of, but he didn't. And dreams are weird, so I just dismissed it. And then when I got to the conference, that white haired man, the, the photo of John Paul was there, and I, I knew that was the guy in my dream. And uh, from that moment, it really, I had to know, you know, I just had to know about this thing. Mainly, he was just teaching on character and integrity. And that's what really I was. Um, drawn to streams ministries because of his um, real his real understanding uh, that the prophetic it's really hard to walk in the prophetic when we don't see prophets walking with character and integrity and and ministers in general basically he would not come teach dreams in your church unless you have taken the art of hearing god Mm -hmm. which is all about character and integrity first and foremost Um, because he wasn't going to give you a new skill set if you didn't have the character to uh, that would undergird that skill set um and i guess it has been 15 years i don't even know how long over a decade that um robert and i worked for him traveled with him and um had a very close mentorship relationship with john paul and that's really where my my i've been teaching and traveling all over the world on dream interpretation we just got back from teaching a conference in poland you can see that on my youtube channel Mm -hmm. that'll be going up a little bit later today um but we just got back from teaching in poland on dreams it's amazing god speaks in polish in people's dreams Mm -hmm. tripped me out (laughs) we actually i I taught on dreams and you know we used to live in in honduras and so we've taught all over um the world spanish too yeah, and, and he's, he speaks Spanish, too. He does? He wow. Does. God speaks yeah. Spanish. I thought he only spoke English. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He doesn't only speak yeah. English? No. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it, so it was, it's, been, it's been a great season. And uh, when John Paul passed away, you know, uh, Robert, we used to work in the office. And um, when he passed away, we just really felt the call to, to move forward uh, with um, our ministry, which is Mandate 58 uh, and Company of Oracles, which is our dream interpretation ministry. And uh, I continue to speak and teach in churches um, all over. So do you have any, you have a book, right? You have a book? I do. It's called, um, what's it called? 
It's Dream. called Dreams, A Window into Your Destiny. Thank you, honey. Ooh. Yeah. It's called, yes. And it's so, being published in Polish. Oh, it, but it's yeah. not out yet. They are, they're, right now they are publishing it in Polish. Oh, okay. Yeah, so well, how can people buy that? Um, actually, you can get it uh, in an ebook format right now because we are going to be expanding it. So we're not running it in print just yet. I haven't decided if I want to reprint or if I'm just going to wait till the expansion. But now that the Polish version is coming out, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and print. But you can get that off of my website at Amy coelho.com in the resources page and you can get the ebook there we also have a free journal on that page um, that you will help you journal your dreams and just kind of give you ideas to think about that help you unlock your own dream interpretation and then we have our online courses we have a 12-week course uh, on dream interpretation and you can find that in our resources too yeah. so, and how do you spell coelho c-o-e-l-l-o Get Did you. you get it? Yes. And I think uh, you can go to dreamsbyamy.com too, and it'll take you to the same place. So I got a question. Yeah. What is a dream that you've had? Like, I, like obviously you've gotten into this as something you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You've used taking time. So what's a dream that you've had? You wanted to know the answer and they take you through the process of God giving you the answer for your, one of your own dreams, the understanding. Yeah, that's a great question because I'm the dream. right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, We're right. going to work on your discernment. Yes. <laughs> okay. He's ahead, dreamy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the dream that I was just talking about was um, probably pro the only one I really remember. I had two other dreams that I really remember that God spoke to me. Um, I even went through Bible school. We we went through Bible school, and we gra we left Bible school and didn't even know that God spoke through dreams. And I took tests on every single book of that Bible, and yet walked out. No one told me that God spoke through dreams. That's scary because then you think, what else am I missing? Right? Mm -hmm. You think, how do you how do I, how do you come out of Bible school? And the and then one third of the Bible yeah. is dreams and visions. Because right? they don't really teach Bible in Bible one school usually. Yeah, I never knew that. I never one knew that. third of the Bible is dreams and visions. It's yeah. referencing or reflecting dreams or visions. How do you come out of Bible school and not know that God speaks through dreams? And it was the primary way God spoke back then. It yeah. wasn't like we had the prophets and and back. You know, it wasn't like Adam and Eve were like, "Hey, honey, you got that Torah over there? Can you? I need to know what to do. You know, let me you know scroll through the Torah. You know, they woke up and they had dreams and and God guided them through um, their dreams. And so to answer that, we I had this dream that I would interestingly enough the word that was given in the dream was you will travel the world teaching the prophetic word of God, not that. travel the world speaking the prophetic word of God. And that was something that developed a lot later. In fact, um, I had had the dream, had, well, and the rest of that dream was once John Paul had walked off the stage, he goes, I will let Samuel L. Jackson give you the, my elder come give you the rest of the word. And Samuel L. Jackson walks out on the stage. And I don't remember anything after that. Some way, clear, clarify, not Samuel L. Jackson, the, in the, dream. the actor. Yeah, the actor oh. walks out in the dream. Oh, really? And, yeah. oh, okay. Right. And so gotcha. it took um, a, lot, a long time for that to develop. But I'll tell you that um, probably 10 years later, I'm teaching at a conference and I'm going through my dream. And there was a part when he said, you will teach the prophetic word of God. It went in me like lightning. Mm -hmm. I bent over and I remember in the dream thinking, stand up or they're going to think you have a demon in you. And looking around, at it, trying to stand up under the weight of the word in the dream. I did, as I'm teaching this 10 years later, the rest of that dream unlocks on me. And I realized that after that, after that uh, dream encounter, I had that dream on a Wednesday. On Thursday, I, I you know, see the photo of John Paul and all the material and stuff, and I go to the conference. And then uh, Monday, I was actually dismissed from um, ministry. In fact, I was told to... I was told there were some false accusations that happened against me. And so um, Monday looked a lot different than traveling the world, preaching, uh, you know, teaching on the prophetic word of God. A lot different. I was fired, you know, so I had to reconcile that whole thing. And so, you know, I, I went through a whole year of going, but you said this, and then this is happening. And it didn't unlock on me that, you know, I had to go through that was fear of man stand up or they're going to think you have a demon in you and the one thing that i had to be delivered from was fear of man one you know speaking on stages all across the world and then also 
being in ministry, the one thing you cannot have is fear of man. It's the, especially as a prophet. Especially if you're going to speak the truth. If you're going to speak the truth. You, can, love, you, you can't cannot have fear of man. You no. cannot. And I think, you know, we know this because this is what the show is about. Yeah. So <laughs> I, you know, it was, it, it, again, it developed and unlocked on me 10 years later while I'm teaching. I had this aha moment and I just had to sit there for a minute and go, hold on. I just, <laughs> I just had some revelation, you know, for myself on that dream. So. Hmm. I'm gonna put you to the test later because yep. I, I got I have some dreams that I feel like I've been, I have the understanding of. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hear what you have to say yep. later. So go ahead. So yeah. I have a question, and we're yeah. this is backing up to what what you said in the very beginning. So a lot of people in the church, I think, have a problem with this. This is why I'm asking yes. this question. And some of these people watching probably are not even Christians. Yeah. Most so, of the people have most of the church has problems with dream interpretation. <laughs> but this is a problem with money. Uh huh. So. Whenever these churches, especially big mega churches nowadays, they have conferences and events and stuff, and they want to charge mm -hmm. to come. Mm -hmm. And so my whole thing has, I used to always think this like, okay, if the point of having this conference or this revival or whatever you want to call it is to tell people about Jesus and about the gospel, then why are they trying to charge people? Because Amen. If you're charging people, then like it sends the somebody message. that's not even a Christian is not going to come. They're not going to pay to go to something that's Christian. That we're not, they don't even care. Yeah. Like well, so, like they have to be invited by somebody. You it know? sends so, it like, sends the message that gospel is not free. Yeah, that's the message it sends. Yeah, and in the Bible, like in when Jesus this is one of my favorite questions. When Jesus went into the temple, he overturned the tables and all that stuff because they were exchanging money in the temple. So for me, like having a coffee shop in your church, having a bookstore in your church, having like charging tickets to go to this conference and that conference and this ministry and that mm -hmm. ministry, that's money exchange in the mm -hmm. temple. So like how, okay, like do you agree with it, number one? And if you do agree with it, how do you, how is it justified? Yeah, so I don't agree with your, con your, um, rendition of that scripture about Jesus and the money. I don't believe that's why he was there. Mm -hmm. And that's totally for a whole nother uh, mm, show. I want to hear that. Though, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> um, but I will tell you that I, I believe the same way you did. And that's really what started the whole process with me and John Paul, right? Because I was like $240 to come to the art of hearing God. Now here's, I do agree that um, the gospel is absolutely free. And we all know that freely you, you've been given, freely you receive, freely you give. Mm -hmm. There's a whole nother concept when I'm preaching at a church on a Sunday and I'm preaching the gospel versus me teaching, right? So here's the thing that really bothers me. I'm a prophet, right? So out of the five-fold ministry, you've got teacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, and apostle, apostle right? Yeah. Apostles get paid because the pastors take up, all the churches take up a portion of their offering or a portion, generally, this is generally how this is done, will send in, uh, when John Paul had the bridge churches, um, they would, from their accumulative tithes, they would send three to five percent or whatever mm. to the head of the apostleship, right? So that we can govern and function. Because, by the way, the gospel is free, but we have real bills around uh -oh. here. So, um, the pastor gets paid by a board who has a salary for people who tithe right teachers get paid because they create curriculums evangelists get paid because when they go out places people give honorariums the only one not being paid is the prophet and it's the only one in the bible and i think if it, if i remember correctly somebody can post this online i think it's samuel might be levitic uh I'll find it. What's the story again? It's it's where he says we need to go to the pro oh it's kings we need to go to the we need a word from God and mm -hmm. he's trying to find Samuel we need a word so let's go up to let's go up to get you know to get direction but they look and they say oh wait do you have anything in your pocket no I have some bread and I have some shekel so mm -hmm. let's go on up they knew they knew that because there is a spirit money is spiritual money is not paper money is not coins. Even Jesus talks about it, and we talk about it in the in the New Testament that where your heart is, you know, so is 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 your yes. money, you know, because he's saying it's this is a spiritual issue. 
I know that when people question, because I had someone on my board question me because I charged ten dollars for me to do a dream circle, everyone had to pay ten dollars. You know why? Because I had to put gas in my RV and I had to print out stuff. I was teaching for free. I was actually giving it away for free, but I needed to take care of my expenses to even get there, because it's like I don't have any donkeys to ride in on. Mm -hmm. I, I, even then, I'd have to pay for them, and so no, those donkeys didn't eat or drink water. They didn't eat. They didn't need mm -hmm. any. They didn't need anything, and right. so. Everyone just knew you see in the Old Testament where they're like, yeah, we need to go up there, but I'm not about to go take from him without giving something. Right. And even Jesus, at, you know, with the he had females who who journeyed with him that took care of the treasury. People gave to that. Man. We do not have that mentality anymore. In fact, I was talking to someone we were reading um, something the other day and Charles no, I don't know who it was, but he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, all of our ministers, we are, we as the church are going to run all of our ministers away and into poverty because we literally live in poverty because nobody wants to pay for anything and nobody is going to give any money. But what my question is, it's not necessarily about like you or a prophet, right? but these people who are like the senior pastor of a church mm -hmm. and then they are like having like conferences. I'm not, I'm trying yeah, yeah. really hard not to say anybody's name. This is, so, okay, yeah, totally <laughs> I was going to say, this is your show. <laughs> so, um, but we have like, and then they have that church decides they're going to have a conference or mm -hmm. something, but then they're charging for people to get into the conference. The whole point of the conference is to, bring people that don't know about jesus and we're, are you going to pay for the electricity there and pay for see i thought the same way i was but, so but, upset no, about the, the 240 dollars is, is that until i had to live off the of church it. gets tithe so i think with the church the money that's being tithed to the church they should have a conference budget they should have a conference budget because yep. th these churches like See, I, I think like, okay, I'm going to just call like this, X no. this one person out because uh -oh. it's, I don't go. agree with him. But Kenneth Copeland, for example, he needs okay. a new jet. Dude, you already got a jet. First of all, you shouldn't have even had a jet, number one. Why? Why does he need a jet? Like, I mean, it's it, that's such a poverty mentality. It's not there, a poverty mentality. Do you know mentality? that Jesus I mean, rides around on, on, I mean, are you kidding but me? We're talking about gold and diamonds. This and, is my mentality and in the way I see it. Heaven. If I, okay, if I had, was it's the your perspective of what a of jet a equals. huge mega church and I was getting a salary mm -hmm. or I was able to get a salary of like $2 million a year, I would say no. I don't need $2 million a year. I need a salary that is enough to live comfortably mm -hmm. and support Kinda my like family. Kind of like Donald Trump is doing, right? Um, and support my family. I'm still talking. And support my family. <laughs> um, and so, um, <laughs> therefore, I, will, I can take a salary of $75,000. Yeah. And anything else that is supposed to be salary can go mm -hmm. to helping the needy, yeah. the starving, the all this. Right. But you know, the Agreed. low in, income families. But right. And and if maybe maybe I'm like so like Over people want to hear my name. So I'm having to travel the whole world like all the time. So maybe I need a, a um yeah. a jet. Maybe yeah. I just because I cause it would be more cost effective for me to have a jet than to buy all these. Because he tickets. worked for, he traveled with Jesse Duplantis. Okay. So he was at those conferences with Kenneth Copeland mm. and Jesse, and okay. we know what it, he knows what it's like having to get to one where they all drive to one conference, and then they got another one, so they send another team out, and Jack has to fly Jesse from this one to this one, because his name is wanted. I mean, yeah. it is out there, and there is a pull for for what so, he has like, to offer his but message. But why do we need two jets? Mm -hmm. Number one. And this is a question that is not just coming from me. It's coming from most mm -hmm. Americans yeah. who are are unchurched or not Christian. Like that's yeah. like whenever I was in it's my good. psychology class in um when I was going to Collin County, I was taking psychology. We walked into that classroom one day and up on the screen is a picture of Kenneth Copeland and his church and why my teacher was an atheist. Why Christianity mm. is um, 
evil and why we should not have any part of it. Welcome and, to college. <laughs> and it was all about Kenneth Copeland. Wow. The whole class. And you the stayed? The whole hour and a half class was about, Can I was we, a student. I had yeah. to pass the class. So what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Drop out? I mean, no. Can we get back to like some definitions of some things here? Though we're talking, we're using yeah. these general terms. We use like apostle, prophet, tithe, but no definition is given. Yeah. And the truth is, when you look in the church, mm-hmm. you see what people talk about these and how their actions back these things. You see that everybody has different definitions, right? Uh, y- and our definition mm-hmm. must be scriptural. <laughs> yes. All right. So the tithe, I was That's just where reading. I begin everything. Yes. I was fine. Yes. Define such and such. Define such and such. I don't think I don't. I, I believe God's kept the the apostles from from the. From the from the church, mm-hmm. the, especially the Western Church, I don't think I don't think we've met one. All right, the God has them in the caves. He has them. He has them aside for now, because look what we've done with, with the prophetic. All right, yeah. we have the prophets are always hated in right. Scripture, and then we go and we applaud these guys that stand on mm-hmm. stand and they have this this gift, this skill set that's nothing but blasphemy. Like seriously, yeah. Like yeah. I, I could call Agreed. out names. I know, I know factually, our dark yeah. occultists that sit and, and have stood on the, the, the that have stood on the um on the steps at Bethel, all right? Mm-hmm. They've done it at the upper room here in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And I, I, can, I can name every famous church, and I, I know factually by the Spirit of the Lord that it's given it to me that these people are dark occultists, and they know what they're doing, and they're intentional. And the church, the church is there and applauds them and calls them these prophets, and I know better. I'm with you. All right, so let's look at the tithe. The tithe was that there would be food in the storehouse for the widows and the poor, and a really good... Um, Understand this, you go read the first century writings from the time of the, the, the resurrection of Yeshua right. to Jesus mm-hmm. to about 320 AD where Constantine sticks. And that, that, that time period right now gives us, if we go read the writings of the early Christians and understand what they're coming from, it's a very, very different understanding that we have yeah. that understanding now. Absolutely. 100%. And I, yeah. I believe Agreed. God is calling the people of God back to a first century mindset and understanding of things. Okay. You know, um, I believe that's where we're coming from. I believe from, in the Acts tithe, which means bring it all. Bring I agree. everything you've I, got. I 100% agree. And with help that. each other. But let's look at what it was. So then the church has these tithes, but they're not practicing what the tithe is for. Come on. All now. right. They're not giving it to the poor. Come on now. All right. You go ask. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, these things I think are okay in the context which God provides these things, right? Right. And they don't, they don't hold us. All right. Right. Because when that thing holds you, Come on you're ill equipped to, to minister the word of God. Right. All right. When you have pride, pride ill equips you from that. And mm-hmm. so um, I say all that to say this. We, we need a definition of these things and understanding that it's, yeah. it's, it's good. unilateral. That's good. All right. And someone said he didn't talk. <laughs> come on you now. Just gotta, you just got to put him in the right come setting. With the I microphone. know. Yeah. You just got to get, get, and get him the right, the right worked content. up. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to get me something yeah. I'm passionate about. Because, yeah. um, He's really no. passionate Because about. I'm on the opposite Good. side. I used to be on your side, mm-hmm. and I've switched to, to more, more, more yeah. covenants now. Mm-hmm. And it's more based on my understanding of, of, of early Christian thinking, early. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, and you know, I agree. I, I had the same thought process you did uh, until I started having to go to conferences, and there, there was nothing more hurtful in, in my life is, we want you to come to this conference, and we want you to speak. Now, I, honestly, I don't care if the church has a conference budget. I don't care if they charge you registration fees. I've been in every single one of those. Mm-hmm. I, I've had it from conference budgets to uh, just an honorarium. Just, and can I tell you that the ones that have blessed me the most are the ones where they just trust God for an honorarium? It's never the registration Amen. ones. Mm-hmm. It isn't. Amen. It just isn't. It never has been. It never no, has I, been. I, I, I have been. I, in, I like that. I have been in a group of five people, and they have blessed us with thousands of dollars. Yeah. Then a church of four hundred and walked away with two hundred dollars. Well, Dr. Can't Pepper even, in a yeah. bag of popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And can't even get to my next event, right? And yeah. so, but you know, the most beautiful part is that I've just learned that they're not my providers, right? Amen. So God yeah. is Amen. my provider. I go because I'm yeah. called to go. How you're going to pay me? If you're going to pay me, that is just not my business. That's God. That's mm-hmm. between you and God. And that has served me well. It has served me well because it keeps me out of hurt and judgment. And I will tell you, I left ministry because of that. When I had to count heads in my I conferences to figure out if I can pay my mortgage or not, I was done. But Stick a fork in me, done. Do but you not have a, like, just like, I charge this. If you want me to come speak, I no. charge this much. No. Good for you. I don't believe that. Yeah, I, I don't I'm, believe in that. Yeah. Will not do it. I will go and preach to people who can't afford anything, and I pay to get there, and I will preach to a conference that just blessed us 
unbelievably and ha were the most organized and you know they blessed us the most and they didn't charge a dime for that that conference not a dime for it we left and we left there with more than we've yeah. ever had. I, I have a question so when when you get an invitation for something for me because like because what it says isn't peter and that, that those who teach all right, and those who lead the, the judgment will be greater than there's, there's a there's a harsh penalty oh, yes. all right because you're leading the people of god astray yes. of, of yah right and I, so i say that my my leash is this short yeah exactly so really for me the question i have is, is when because it's hearing god especially for yourself mm -hmm. is not always as easy as for somebody else right like having that that deep understanding where you just have an understanding of where they're at and um so how do you navigate when you know the lord is is calling you to go speak and into this place and when you're not because i find that obvious often the most attractive ones are not the lord yeah i've had my butt kicked enough where yeah. I've been where I wasn't <laughs> supposed to be that I'm just very careful <laughs> like when you have just had your butt kicked because you went to somewhere you shouldn't have been and you made it happen or even they rolled out the red carpet for you so you can't base it on obstacles and you can't base it on doors opening yeah. you have to know that you know your team has to be in agreement we have to be in agreement I mean we Number almost one. didn't go to a conference um, we almost didn't go to one conference and we were going to call it off and and it just didn't seem logistically right. Nothing felt right. Mm -hmm. And I had a dream and I, I knew, I, well, someone, one of our kids had a dream that the mm -hmm. RV fell over or the tire blew out and it fell over. And we went to go get the tire, the tire, all our tires evened out. And it was absolutely would have blown out on us had we not had one of my kids not had that dream. And it was like from that point, I go, no, nope, we're going. Enemies trying too hard. And it's just a matter of really knowing who you, who you are. Um, and I have always I'm an emotional investigator. Right. Mm -hmm. So so I when I say something or do something or want to go somewhere, what's my agenda? Yeah. What do I need from it? What am I going to benefit from it? And I'm very real with myself and deal with those things because we're you human. You have to be. You have, have to be. Real, be. Real, so, and yeah. You have to be. And I've just been doing it so long. I just don't have a need to be needed. Like, you know, there's that time when, when I first started out, I wanted to be everybody's dream interpreter. And John Paul spanked that out of me real fast. That's it, yeah. And it just, you know, it just gets to a point where you do what God's called you to do. I have so many people ask me, oh, Amy, I want to do what you want to do. And I'm like, you won't do what I do until you don't want to do what I do. Because yeah. I don't want to do what I That's do. That's good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, like and I think I have that my my the reason why I'm so passionate about the way I feel about mm -hmm. like the money and all that stuff is mm -hmm. because my true heart is for everybody that no, doesn't know about Jesus for yeah. them to know about Jesus. Absolutely. Like that's what I care the most about. Yeah. So you I mean do. that's the reason I'm doing this show. Yeah. So like um You have such an evangelist why, heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I this show is not free, by the way. I spend a lot of money a month. And so, exactly. um, <laughs> so donations. I was bring that up. So donations are appreciated. That was not what I was talking about. Yeah. I was just saying, like. No, we I, are, though. I, I do <laughs> what I do because I care. Yeah. And, and, you know, I spend my own money to do yeah, that because absolutely. I care. But, and I don't expect everybody to, yeah. to believe the way I believe in, or anything. Yeah. Like, I will probably come to a time in my life whenever I don't feel this way. Um, yes, uh, especially if you evolve. get, yeah, we all yeah. do, we, we evolve, evolve in it. And especially when, because I, I did, like I said, I, I believe the same way you did until I had to fly out on that $240. I had to get hotels on that $240. Yeah. I had to eat on $240. And, and while I'm doing all that, I still had to pay my bills back home. Yeah. And so it was just a process for me. It really was. It was a process of despising that, that understanding, God freeing me from a poverty mindset to I... All my money comes from this speaking to I trust you, God. And I think that it's different, like, for me, because I also have a full-time regular job. Mm -hmm. So, like, so, yeah. And this mm -hmm. is your full-time job. So, right. therefore, you got you to gotta eat. Yeah. You got to yeah. raise kids. You know, stuff, again, you know? So, I, when I said I left ministry, when I left Streams Ministries, um, and it really was like a matter of, you know, other, there were some other conflicts, but I, you know, when I started having to count heads to figure out if I could pay my, I, I knew I needed to stop. Uh -huh. I needed to stop. And I walked away from Christianity, really. I just walked away from Christianity altogether. I went into a cave and was dismantled. Do I believe in hell? Do I believe in the blood? Do I believe in 
is Jesus l- theoretical or, and, and I was, compl- I dismantled, God stripped me from everything I learned in Bible school, everything that I learned from a pulpit. And, and really just, I had to find that out for myself, you know, and I told God, I'm not going back to you that the, your people, like, I like you kind of a <laughs> little bit, but your people jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> and two years later, as I arose from those ashes, God said, she is, but will you love her anyway? Will you love her anyway? And the next time I stepped foot in a church where I swore I wouldn't step foot in another church ever again, and here I am in churches all the time. And I, you know, mine, mine's a little bit different because I'm teaching a skill set. And some of, one of the things that someone had taught me, uh, with my business consultant, actually, it was really interesting. Amy, you know, when you, what you teach for free, what you give for free is the, is the wow. What people pay for is the how. If I interpret yeah. your dream, it's a ministry. I do that as a ministry. I will never charge you for interpreting dreams. I don't believe in that. I think it's completely against the word of God. I don't, if you, it, don't ever pay somebody to interpret your, your dream. Just saying that. I'm going <laughs> to leave that one right there. Um, I just don't believe in it. But if I'm going to teach you how to do it, you're yeah. gonna, I'm going to charge you for it. Because you're taking that time away from my children. Mm-hmm. You're taking that time away from me working and making an income. And so um, there's a difference between teaching and preaching. Preaching the gospel should be free. Amen. Teaching the gospel is a little bit different. That's a skill set that that requires a skill set. And just for all the viewers and listeners and all that, if you are ever questioning if God is real and, oh, my God, like, is there a hell? Is there a heaven? Is God real? Does God exist? But does Jesus exist? Like all this stuff, like. It is okay. It is okay. It is okay. God is big enough for your questions. I have oftentimes questioned if God even exists. I think every Christian does. Mm -hmm. Or Or should. Or has. Mm -hmm. Should. Yeah, at some point. In their walk. Right? At some point, there's that question that comes in. And it's the the answer to that question is is honestly self-defining. Like, truth Mm -hmm. is always demonstrable. All right? Mm -hmm. I can drop this phone. It'll all fall. We can demonstrate the truth. We can have an argument against the scientific methods, whether that is buoyancy versus density right. or gravity. We can have that argument, but the truth remains the same. It's going to fall, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, so just because we don't have the understanding of the truth does not mean that – just because we don't have the understanding to be able to demonstrate it does not mean it's not demonstrable. Makes right. sense? Come on now. Because, yeah. uh, so, yeah. so just because we don't have the understanding to prove Yahuwah, yeah. the one true God, does not mean that it's – there, but there is a way was to that test Native, it. Was that Native American? Yeah, I'm just kidding. I mean, Yahweh, Yahovah. What, what, what did they say? Like, that was Jehovah, a Southern whatever. Hebrew. Yeah. Well, yeah, Yahovah, I believe because of the work of, uh, I, I like, it, sa- it says in scripture, it says in, um, in Genesis, in, in those days, mm-hmm. men began to call on the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Right. And that name has been lost. That name, the understanding of that name has been lost. But, you know, it says um, again in Revelation, if you look at the book of Revelation, it's like an amped up version of the book of Exodus. <laughs> all right. And um, it says, and in that day, men began to call on the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. the character of the Lord, right? And I believe there's a time coming. But I honestly, I mean, my, my personal conviction is that it's Yahovah. I'm not going to make anybody else. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's my personal. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I have a personal conviction not to call him he, but that's just my personal thing. Well, why is that? No, I, this this is about dreams. No, okay, no, about no. is We're that a joke? I was like, was that a joke? I mean, no. um, uh, no. The going. What were we? I completely lost my train of thought. Um, you're what you call Jesus or whatever. Jesus God. <laughs> you, 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 you asked me the question. And you got me off track, yeah. and I, I don't remember. Oh, demonstrate it. Well, this is easy. Yeah. If you if you were if you are doubting God, if you're doubting the existence of God, it's really really easy. Mm-hmm. All right, He gives promises in Scripture, and He says, "Test me and see that they not be true." Mm-hmm. All right, He says He says in Jeremiah thirty three three, "Call unto me, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know." We know that God is not a respecter of persons. I mean, he doesn't care if you're poor or rich, who you are, what you, who your parents right. are. He doesn't care. All right. Thank and God. it's simply this. It's, it is as simple as if you don't know the Lord, it's like it's, it's as simple as this. All right, God, if you are the one true God, demonstrate yourself to me. Show me that you are real and I will serve you the days of my life. Yeah. And I, I will serve you. And that's, it's that simple. All right. He's going to come to you. I promise you he will. Yeah. Not the way you expect him to. And it might the not be in that moment. He's probably since the. Yeah. 
existence of man. And then it says the real God. It says you know? test yeah. that spirit. And any spirit, any anybody that says that Jesus did not come in the flesh is not of Him, mm-hmm. right? Right. And so anybody's listening, that it's just that simple. Like, yeah. You don't need me to come in and lead you. Yeah, we like, were in the streets uh, two weekends ago. We mm-hmm. when where you took a, t- a dream team out in Deep Ellum. And uh, it was so funny because I usually try to sit back and just in case someone needs me for like the real like help. And a guy, he said, Amy, he's calling for me. And I come up and uh, this girl has a cross on. And so the first mistake was just assuming that she was Christian. And that's kind of where he, he kind of made it. It his, was upside his, down. He should have known. No, that it, was, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it was a beautiful cross, but he made the mistake of just um, looking at outer appearances. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I, I interpret the dream. And they bo- and she tells me, well, I'm atheist, you know. And so, and then he, I interpret his dream. And hers was very dark and, and had to do with witchcraft. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I have anything to do with witchcraft. I'm like, that makes me concerned. I don't. And she goes, well, like midway through the dream, she's like, well, I mean, I played with a Ouija board last month. I'm like, what are you, seven? Like, we, like what are we doing playing with Ouija boards at like 30? No, no, no. <laughs> and so, and, and then, but our boyfriend had this really beautiful dream about being in a boat and it's light and, and stuff. And I said, but let me guess, you're atheist too. And he goes, yeah, I am. And, and the thing is that, you know, I didn't flinch. And that's the thing that he noticed is I didn't flinch. And I just said, here's the deal. God is big enough mm-hmm. for your questions. Right. He is yeah. big enough for, for your, 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 mista- your thoughts. Your, and, and he's so big, you're going to run into him. And one, this is one of those moments. Yeah. Because, and like I tell my team, we are not here to convert anybody Mm-mm. we are not here to on assignment nobody wants to go to your church stop just stop can you just love people yeah there you go it, marketing exactly. says uh, even marketing That's knows right. it you there have to has to be te- seven touches for someone to convert to your brand average can you you don't know if you're touch one touch seven touch five can we just not treat them like you're touch seven let's mm. just don't do that they're not an agenda they're not an assignment just love on them and just show them Jesus. Yeah. And and let the next person do do that. Or maybe they're they're there. We did have some salvations there. Mm-hmm. We had healings there. And uh, atheists walked away with like they were on fire for you know that their interpretation and and they walked away you know thinking. But here's and what the seed But here is what was most important. They had an incredible encounter with a Christian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the most yeah. important. No one that judged is. them. No one flinched. No one tried to convert them. No one, you know, just love on them. Yeah. And that yeah. was the most important thing there but in that. I had one I, guy that just in reference to that, that we, we, I could, we couldn't get rid of him. Yeah, I kept hanging This around. guy, this Asian guy comes just walking up and he, um, he legit had a dream, <laughs> right? Was it legit? I didn't, hear legit. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. I was supposed to hear something. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it again. No. <laughs> but, but just real quick, this guy comes up and, and he literally had a dream that morning that he was going to meet a group of non-judgmental Christians in Deep Ellum. Wow. And this guy was like, like mind blown that we were just there. And this isn't to pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. It, it's just, that's just, we say no agenda, but yeah, I do have an agenda. Mm. My agenda is not to have an agenda. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just to go out there and just freaking love on people, man. Exactly. And, and yeah. you know, I, I, I learned this many, many years ago doing servant evangelism and the pastors tripped out because I'd go out with a pack of cigarettes in each pocket. And when, mm-hmm. when homeless people would come up to me and they'd say, hey, you got a cigarette? I sure do. And I got a lighter. Now, I'm not advocating that to church <laughs> ministries and all that. That's just my style. <laughs> And I don't need to even introduce Jesus in my first encounter with you, man. Yeah. I'd rather know what kind of ice cream you like. Let's sit down. And if it takes a cigarette or two or three so that we can just have casual conversation, I can get to know you. Why are you on the streets? What happened What's to your you? Story? You know, I want to mm-hmm. hear your story, man. And then somewhere in there, I'm looking for that moment yeah. where, the, where the light comes yeah. on. And then I know by the Spirit of God, yeah. I have a place to... To, to drop something in there that'll change their life. Exactly. And then they can walk away and go, you know, if, if, if they just walk away going, man, can I curse on this show? No. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, we keep in discussion what cursing is. Yeah. I mean, uh, but, oh, God. <laughs> He's like, define, define cursing. cursing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. So, but, but like that. that I'm that, Christian, this, but I cuss a little. I'm <laughs> Christian, but I drink a little. This, this, this guy couldn't leave, you know, and the point is, is that he... He had a whole different agenda that night, man. That dude was on like Quaaludes. He yeah. had done lines of yeah. coke. He was, I mean, he came too, man. Yeah. He was sober. He sobered and up. He was so real that 
I, I was, I'm, I'm pretty out there. So like, I, I've seen people that are no. that messed up. And I said, I looked at him and I said, do you, he, he, but, but the, his honesty was so beautiful because I looked at him and I said, do, do you want to be um, sober right now? And he looked at me and he goes, no. <laughs> I, go, I, I said, dude, that's so no. awesome. You're about to call Cause, that sobriety. Because I, I pictured him thinking about what he just did and how much he spent to get there. It's like, no. no. <laughs> anyway. It's like good money getting yeah. this. Yeah. But he walked, he walked funny. that one guy, and if it was only him and it was several, I encountered mm -hmm. many that night, but that guy walked away that night and had had a, a revelation yeah. uh, in a dream and then it, and then it happened yeah. and now i mean just think about like how incredible that is in his heart mind and soul mm -hmm. that this jesus this god that he already knew of spoke to him in a dream yeah. Yeah. and then he and then he encounters him out on the streets with us Anyway, so yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's I'll amazing. cry if I go any further. Yeah. It's amazing, and I just want and people you can't to know cry that, on the like, show. all oh. of us here, all of us, nobody's perfect. All of us here, we've all had a, a oh, Jesus. we've all had a crazy life. Yeah, so do. Don't think that all Christians are perfect. No. Some people think that. All yeah, it's Christians crazy. Are perfect. Yeah, or like, uh, some Christians think that. Yeah, and some Christians think that. Therein lies the problem. <laughs> I yeah. used to think that when I first got saved and went to church, yeah. I was like, I got to clean it all up. Why are these people doing clean this? Clean it up. Mm. And they're Christian. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what you just described is 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 it sounds to me like being really genuine with the person, which I think a lot of Christians have a hard time being genuine because not genuine with themselves, mm. right? Right. We were and just so, talking about that today. And so oh, learning uh, that's something learned. I really didn't learn as a Christian. That's something I learned being in sales. <laughs> right. Because I, I was in sales, and I learned right? that being in genuine is what. And it, it forced me to become genuine with myself, right? Yeah. And it was uh, and it, uh, that unlocked in my my, my right. Christian walk for yeah, me. me it was, too. You know, years ago. But something in loving people in the street and in loving is, and it's this this some I don't know where this came from and like at what point this became an issue in the church, but somewhere around. I'm just gonna the, blame Constantine. <laughs> before you I mean, even get don't started, even get I just blame everything don't on don't him. Don't get me started because yeah. I can. I'll start blame going into like him. our pagan roots, <laughs> right. but. Um, Different show, <laughs> yeah. But so where we we, we can definitely we have that redefine show. what grace is, and therefore we yeah. redefine oh, how to love boy. somebody, right? And <laughs> and loving somebody is being able to tell them the truth, <laughs> all right. right? But without judgment, without That's without right. them feeling the judgment from them, right? Like, and it's it's when you when there's judgment in your heart towards them, and they feel that like they can most people can handle the truth Absolutely. if you have love in your heart because Jesus yeah. never shied yeah. away from the truth Absolutely. always straight up mm -hmm. you, know, you brood of vipers Ooh. oh you and then yeah. and then uh, like a few verses said, down he goes down and says and he went about the countryside preaching the, these uh, encouraging, encouraging words, words. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like will, we got we are jacked up on what the definition of encouraging I will means just say I agree. Yes. I'm gonna honor one of my very close friends and that's Estreita yes. because let me tell you about Estreita. Uh, She's watching. So, Hi, Estreita. Like, I love Estreita. And since I've been a Christian and going to the church, there has been a lot of people, a lot of people that have tried to um, correct me, bring correction <laughs> to me, I guess I, I will say. I know where you're going with this. But, um, and... Many times, and many times, it's always been very hurtful. Mm -hmm. I got very offended because of the way. First yeah. of all, I don't even know you that well for you to be trying mm -hmm. to correct me. Come on! But now. then, whenever you're trying to correct me, why are you talking to me like that? Because mm -hmm. in my past life, I would have probably cussed you out. It would probably not page. have ended well. And so, but my friend Estraita is now. always one who I can go to, and I say, I have had this situation occur and then she can always like she can always help me to understand where they were coming from yeah and mm -hmm. help me to know what to say to them to um like make it okay you know yeah and then and it's never offensive and Estreita has corrected me plenty <laughs> Of times, <laughs> but, I, but I am never offended by no. the way that she corrects me. I am never offended. Only when she corrects me about Trump, I'm offended. But yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> when she does it to oh, me, that's it's the one but that's if she's only... not talking about Trump, I am not offended. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but she doesn't like because she has love in her heart and she genuinely cares and she genu genuinely wants to help yeah. people and yeah. me mm -hmm. and. 
I really can add, and I've had a couple of mentors in my life that were mentors, you know, and they wanted to be my mentors because of what, what they thought they could get out of me, you know, mm. and what they did get out of you. Yeah. And we already know who that person is. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, um, but Estra Ita, I would consider to be yeah. a mentor. I, we mm-hmm. have a saying in our ministry, uh, another, another band that says, what would Esther Ita do? Yeah. <laughs> because what I, I want to do is, and what I, she would do are two totally separate things. Like, like I've, I've stalked your Facebook page over the last couple of years since I, cause and so I know you from there and I'm gonna tell you, there's been times that I've wanted to like get some some of those people's addresses and go pay them a visit. They're rough. And I try to stay away, but there was a couple of times that I had to get in there and say some things as well, you know, because it, just the way that they were correcting you, and I'm like. Do these people even have a freaking brain like, in their head, yeah. man? The way that well, they're talking to you. Welcome is like, to the church. Anyway, welcome to so, Christianity. Right. I, I have recently been um, blocked from my church's Facebook group. group so yeah. I don't, it's not my church anymore. But yeah, I was blocked. So all because of, because I defended someone. Church so, drama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Church, yeah. church drama. But, but you know, and there's no way. difference in, you know, I've been in the legal field for 20 something years and. There's no difference in 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 institutionalized anything. Yeah, you're you're going to have true. this. You're going to have the same thing in the in the gay w- un- world, and it, we had it in the legal field and in the church community. I mean, it's it's just um, when you add religion to Oof. to the drama, it becomes very toxic, more toxic than the average. Because it's it's like de- it's like defensive driving versus offensive driving. It's you know we all know we want to get to that spot. But what are you going to do to get there? Yeah. You know, and, and how are you going to act and how are you going to respond? And, and I tell people this, when people get offended with the church, people, you know, and I did, I walked away from the church completely. Um, I've, I have a habit of studying other religious religions, especially in dreams. I study the rabbinic texts, Aramaic texts, Persian texts. And so I, I have no problem. Yeah. My son came home one day and he's like, he, at the dinner table, it tells us. So I, I, I got the Quran. I think he thought he was going to surprise us. We're like, okay, right. tell us how it goes. <laughs> and he's like the next two weeks to a month later he, he said i think i'm buddhist or something tibetan or something i'm like all right tell I me how that, that goes was everything I, <laughs> tell me how that I goes i became everything that i needed how does it work until, for until you? i got a hold of jesus <laughs> yeah, he okay. couldn't surprise us and, and the thing and, is i just said listen i don't have to shove my bible down your throat mm-hmm. Jaden, because jesus has a way of kicking your butt all the way to the cross just like he did me and me. You know, I, I mean, you're going to find them. And if you don't, it's your journey, man. Yep. We have to respect each other's Come on journeys. Now. We have to find a respect, yeah. even our children. Because I just had my hair done by someone who was absolutely in, uh, was locked in closets by uh, six years old because she couldn't remember her, you know, um, Bible verse, you know, because parents are so, it's because it's narcissistic parenting. Mm-hmm. You knowing that Bible verse reflects on me. I'm a bad parent if you don't know that Bible verse. That's religion. <laughs> yeah, that's religion. That's what Jesus. you mean by you got to respect people's journeys. I mean, like, on one hand, like, I'm not going to um, shove my belief mm-hmm. down some, like, like my child. Or a throat. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel the need to be honest with them. Like, if I honestly believe he's the only way, yeah. there's no way, there's no way of the Father except by him, mm-hmm. then it is my duty to to lovingly, without judgment, mm-hmm. to say, listen, brother, listen, like, you're deceived. Right. And by right? And there's nothing respect in their journey. And there's, yeah. Yeah. That and is there's respect. Nothing. But Jesus had three relationships, okay? Jesus had the relationship with the sick and the broken, which was extremely compassionate. Mm, this is good. Jesus had a, a relationship with the disciples that were con- it was a little bit firm and a lot more vulnerable and a lot more transparent. Mm. He also had a relationship with the Pharisees, <laughs> right? And he didn't which have a was, lot of grace for. <laughs> which is a lot was very yeah. rough. And if and here's the problem we have in church is that we want to treat the Jezebel spirit like they're the sick and broken or we want to teach the sick and we want to we want to talk to the sick and broken like they're disciples and they're not those are three different relationships and they they take on three different speech patterns and the problem is is that the church the the church reads the bible from the top down well when you read it from the top down you know down the page you see Jesus interacting with Pharisees you see him interacting with the sick and broken you see him interacting and you don't stop to think have you read it parallel Mm, where you only read the interactions he has with Pharisees Mm. It's a lot different. Shows you a whole nother Jesus. Or only read the interactions he had with with disciples. 
read it yeah. parallel. It, it takes on different. The, sure the mis- we get our our butts handed to us in church, especially if you're in the prophetic movement with the Jezebel. We were talking right before the show mm-hmm. on the Jezebel spirit, and how um, you because we don't know how to treat. We want to be nice and kind, and we want to win it. Jesus didn't do that. There wasn't Never. a Phar- Pharisee, which is a Jezebel spirit, which is a is an antichrist spirit. Um, that he did not walk by, that he didn't handle. Sometimes he went, y'all run along. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway. I thought we had dreams. <laughs> this is, show is not on dream interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You said earlier that those two guys had, had uh, these two people had dreams, one was dark, one was both. They both mm-hmm. made, it's a really made me think of the, the cupbearer and the baker for Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, uh, so I have a dream for you. Okay. All right. So this, I feel like I'm going to test your skill set here. Yeah. I, I feel like I have an understanding of this dream. Yeah. Something that's already come to pass in my life. I'm just curious. Well, let me let me set this up for you. Um, because I think this is one of the things in dreams that people shy away from. I've been teaching this for many, 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 many years. And um, a lot of people will not step into dream interpretation. They want to, they know they're called, they, they want to do this, but they're, especially if I'm on a team or something, they get very nervous because, you know, my skill set and, and they think, well, they won't get it right. And here's the thing. We all interpret differently from our gifts. So I can hear a dream. All four of us can hear a dream and Robert's going to have a different interpretation than I'm going to have different interpretation. You're going to have a different interpretation. You're going to have a different interpretation. The core message will always be the same. Let me give you an example. Every conference, if I have a larger conference, I break everybody into groups of four or five, usually five. And I give the same dream to each group and they quietly will interpret the dream quietly amongst themselves. And the phenomenon is that they all come up with the exact same message. Mm -hmm. They all come up with this. Now, here's the difference. They all see the different surplifious, the, the, the other elements, the other dream elements, the symbols, the pink car, the, the forest. They have different elements. The message is the same, but they will interpret the symbols a little bit different because dreams are revelation. Dreams are, are, are like scripture. It is the revel- it's the rhema word of God. That's why when I interpret a dream rightly, people go, aha. Oh, mm-hmm. right. It's that same aha moment that we get when when the word comes alive to us. You can write a dream down in your journal today and you can go back a year from now. You can go, you know, a year and come back to it. And that dream means something completely different, just like scripture, because I can read scripture. I can read a scripture today and go, oh, I can see how I can wrap that around my what, what's going on at work today. Oh, my gosh, that makes so much sense. Part is it's the Hebraic understanding of seven levels of revelation. And then you go, um, I can go a year later, read the same scripture, and it means something completely different because you can't exhaust the word of God. Mm-hmm. You can never exhaust it. It's living. It's dynamic. It is not static, which is the problem with the Pharisees. Yeah. It is dynamic. And so are dreams. And so dreams are ever evolving. They are alive. They are. I tell people without sounding sacrilegious that your dream journal is your own private Bible. It's your communication with God and it's alive. And so you may have interpreted that dream and it meant something specific, but you can take that dream a year from now or now give it to him and it'll mean some, it, the, we'll all get the core meaning. We'll get the same meaning, but we all interpret from our skill sets a different. Yeah. Um, my best friend is, teaches from a deliverance. She sees every dream from a fractured soul. I teach on destiny. Destiny is my biggest passion in life. Seeing people, I'm a you know business consultant and I do small b- uh, business launches. I love to see people being pushed into what they're called to do. And so I see every dream from an angle of how do I get you to where God wants you to be? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, before we go there, there let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's establish biblically, mm-hmm. like, what dreams is, how God uses it. Because I mean, God comes to you, and he speaks in the night season via, via a vision of the night. Yeah. Job, All right. 15. Yeah, it's in Job. Um, and then there's, there's, other, there's other places where he talks about the night season. Night season. And I, I interpret the night season two ways. 
All right. So first we have the night season, the literal night when we when we are mm-hmm. asleep at rest. But there's also the night season within the season within the calendar mm-hmm. year. All right, because December twenty fifth. All right, we have you know, or December twenty third, the solstice. Right. Yeah. This is the darkest night of the year. So we're in the night season mm-hmm. then. And I find that God speaks to me often in actual visions mm-hmm. and in actual like more vividly in that season. Yeah. But also in that not in that season, He speaks to me in the in the night season just mm-hmm. when I dream you know so it's Ezekiel's wheels within wheels understand the cycles and the, and the, the meanings of God right, right? Um, and so let's yeah I just wanted you to kind of establish biblically how, yeah. how do we interpret dreams biblically and, right and yeah you so that. we see all the way through the Old Testament and the New and I have a question too yes. why you're doing that yeah <laughs> yeah because um, some people say they don't they don't dream mm-hmm. but I think everyone dreams they you just don't to. remember their Scientists, dreams t- science has already proven that yeah you have to dream so like my question is, do you ever, does everybody dream? Mm-hmm. And um, why can't people remember their dreams mm-hmm. who can't remember their dreams? And why is it important to have a dream journal? Okay, yes. yes. So going to yours, where we see all the way through the Bible, well, one, the one third of the Bible references or reflects dreams and visions. So we understand that. And the word dream and vision is the same word in Hebrew. It's used interchangeably. Chalam is to bind firmly to. And also means, um, well, the word dreaming in Hebrew actually means to um, (laughs) insert with seminal fluid. Is what the actual, to insert with seminal fluid. That's what the word dream, dreaming, (laughs) uh, the act of dreaming actually means. And um, and so to bind firmly to are those are the ones we're going to remember. But we see all the way through the Old Testament, many places where, um, you know, God speaks through dreams. He talks about listening to dreams. Leviticus, it talks about don't follow the false dreamers. Uh, Ecclesiastes talks about busyness of the day dreams. Um, and then we move into the New Testament where the first chapter is, get your ma- get your baby and go because they coming for you. You know, okay, mm-hmm. he wakes up, you know, and through the dream and... So all surrounding Jesus' birth was dreams. And then you see in Acts where it says, and in the last days I will pour out my spirit, and he, you, they will see dreams and visions. We believe that dreams and visions will usher in the last days as it ushered in Jesus in, in, in Matthew. And um, we see that. I can say that confidently because I study the statistics of dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the largest dream um, group on Facebook. We've got 50,000 something people. We've got 60,000 people who follow our ministry. Um, so we can see patterns that other people can't see. Um, we also have um, Jeff O'Dell, who is with Eyes to See, is running stats and, and statistics, and he's a data analyst, and um, he's working with uh, MIT to um, take these dreams that they've taken off of our dream site and kind of do some, some um, are people having, yeah, are people dreaming? Because we've already micro-proved our theory with the um, Dallas shooting that was down here just uh last year, year and a half or something, because people were dreaming about it prior to happening all the way down to like it cowboy hat. They just didn't get the the day. They didn't get the day. Um, But then the Orlando shooting too, we micro proved our theory then. So we're, we're starting to see people will pick up on dreams prior to events happening. Um, So we also, so we know that in the last days and we're seeing people dreaming a lot more. Also, you probably haven't met a Muslim that was not converted that wasn't converted through a dream. Most yeah, Muslims are converted vision. through dreams. Uh huh. Yep. And yeah. so we start seeing that a lot. I mean, we're st- seeing a lot of. There are a lot of Muslims on our page, as long as as well as witches. If you go to my page and you are a believer, please don't send me emails about uh, witches and New Agers. Yes, I know they're on there, but our site is mainly for the non-believer. It is not for it. So if you're a Christian and you're frustrated, that is a sign to jump in and help. Don't point out the problem. Be the solution. Amen. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that one right there with you. But um, and going to yours, so we, we've established that dreams are biblical and from God. Um, you, I think I have a video on YouTube that goes through all of the, the dreams on um, – uh, all the scriptures, I go through all of the scriptures, every single scripture. I'm writing a journal, a book now. I'm, all, I'm almost done with it, and it's every dream of the Bible um, and goes through every reference uh, and, I was and just talking about. That's funny. I, I was literally just wondering this morning if there was something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. 
I need more money. Dream in the Bible. <laughs> she needs money, people. I need more money to get it out. Um, um, but going and going back to your question is that um, everybody does dream. Science has already proven that um, you have to dream every three days or you lose your mind. You'll actually break, have a nervous breakdown. Uh, so, so scientists have proven that it is a you know part of. Um, working things out, you know, we, I tell people this, their dreams come from three different places. They come from um, us purging our soul. It would, Ecclesiastes talks, talks about just the busyness of the day. Those are the ones you can't remember. Those are the ones that you know you're dreaming and you think it was about work or whatever. Then we have dreams that come from the enemy that are seeded into our dream life, just like they were seeded into our thought life, um, that are there sent on assignment to bring in hope, hopelessness and fear. Um, and then we have some, and then we have God dreams, dreams that are given to us by God. We're going to remember those. Typically. Now, I say typically because a lot of times I take my conferences when I ra ask them to raise their hand, the majority of people in my conferences will say, no, they don't dream. I haven't dreamed. I don't know what's wrong with me. And I take them through repentance. I take them through the repentance because we have um, a lot of times we know that God spoke through dreams or maybe we didn't know. But, you know, I tell people, I ask people in my conferences, I said, hey, raise your hand if you believe God speaks through dreams. Pretty much everybody believes yeah, that. Even the Baptists believe that. They believe like, God speaks through dreams. That. Do you keep a dream journal? No, like one third of the, and then you don't believe God speaks through dreams because there is no way that you can walk away from the precious voice of the Lord with, that is giving you divine wisdom, divine strategy, divine understanding, and walk away from that. So you may know it, but you surely don't know it. Yeah, you don't right? understand it. You know it, but you don't understand it. Right. Yeah. And so the importance of keeping a dream journal is just for that. And that's the our mission in our ministry is to is to create dream circles everywhere across the United States of, of America where I go and do a conference and then I leave a group of people who in that city they will be known as the dream interpreters. Hey, I don't understand this. Let let's go let's go see the dream interpreter. You know, let's go. But there is an element to where God, we do understand our own dreams to a point, but in reality, we can't get the fullness of it because we're, we're peering through ego. We're peering through a, a paradigm that is unclean most of the time and biased. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. and if we were able to do that on our own, we wouldn't need each other. Mm -hmm. Dreams are because we need each, we need each other. We need each other's understandings. We need, I mean, I've had, I've had people come to me and say, hey, I had a dream that I'm supposed to get up and move to wherever. Really? Because you haven't really cleaned up anything around here. So uh, I'm going to say that that's not what that dream meant. You know, yeah, so, yeah. Um, but we w we're creatures of let me make myself comfortable. So we'll do whatever it takes. And dreams are spirit. So you can, the, the deception of dreams is that you can wrap that thing around anything you want it. Just like mm -hmm. you can a parable. You know, you can wrap it around anything you want. I've had people have dreams that I'm supposed to marry so and so, but so and so is married. You can twist the word of God into anything you want too. That's yeah. right, because yeah. it's spirit, yeah. And, yeah. and you can with dreams it's also. And that's why having a group and a body of people to help interpret those dreams for you, you know, um, will keep us from being blindsided. And so, um, how do we dream? I, I tell people go through. In fact, that we're going to do our uh, webinar on that. I think the middle of next month. No, that's going to be nightmares. We're going to be talking not nightmares. But I, we're going to be doing a webinar soon. You can look for it on our website. On um, well, hey, dream reset. Hey, I'm not dreaming. I don't know. I don't even know what to do. And that's really just walk through the repentance, saying, Hey, I walked away from you, God. You told me this, and I didn't. I didn't believe that you spoke through dreams. I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't uh, chase after it says, you know, it says chase after the prophetic pine after go after it, move after the prophecy is just the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. And real prophecy, true prophecy. That's right. Yeah. It's the testimony. Right. Yeah. For and, sure. and so what, what, okay. What does that mean? Well, Jesus walked this earth as a parable. It's a parabolic language. Yeah. So are dreams. Amen. Yeah. It's a dreams are a parable. Well, the Bible is a parable. People, people seem to forget that. Right. It it's, is it's a parable. A, it's a parabolic language mm -hmm. and it is only there. It's hidden. The Bible says it's the dreams are, and, and is hidden, dark, riddled because it's only for those who have eyes to see. Amen. A lot of people yeah. believe that nightmares are, oh, it's a nightmare. Job said, 
Job, Job said, and you terrify me upon my bed at night. Sometimes all <laughs> I, dreams I just are read that nightmares. this morning too. They're not all nightmares. Yeah. Uh, they're branding for sure. Because halam means to bind firmly to. And I promise you when you woke up from that dream, it bound firmly to you. Um, but repentance, um, also it's an, a, it's a, it's like a muscle, you know, you, you practice preaching, you practice prophesying, you practice, um, teaching, you practice managing and you practice dream interpretation. And so, um, just, I tell people just start with being faithful, um, open your dream journal by your bed, prepare your place, you know, Jacob's ladder, the story of Jacob's ladder, you know, he pulled the rock up under his head. Why? Because he was preparing his place to, to receive that visitation. And so, you know, if you're not dreaming, I tell people, get all the electronics out of your room, worship, play worship music in your room while you're gone, open up the journal and write down the question of your heart. I need an answer to this, God. Is this the job I'm supposed to take? And be specific, not make me a better wife or make me a better husband or, you See, know, I tell me, have, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, very specific and and that's really just to let your body, your brain, and God know, hey, I'm ready to hear you. I'm ready to receive you. And you may not get anything the first day. You may not get anything the first week. You might have a glimpse, like write down the feeling you had when you woke up. What, write down the snippet you had. And I promise you, it gets more and more and more. It's almost like the, all of heaven stands up and go, she's listening. <laughs> she's listening. Because yeah. God will find another way to speak to you. Yeah, you, you said something earlier. I, I, I feel like dream is something I get a, I get a lot of dreams, mm -hmm. especially as the last few years. Mm -hmm. And it's something I, f I feel like I'm beginning, at least for myself, to get a really solid handle on. Yeah. I said that now and now God will, God will show me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, for the most yeah. part, I feel like I, I get a, a pretty solid. And what's one of the things that happens to me, one of the ways I know it's the Lord in the dream is very often I will wake up not remembering the dream. Mm -hmm. and it will come to me in, a, in an instant later, a day later, hours mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. a week later. It becomes unveiled. It, it will come to me. It's just like, boom, it's there. And it's like, whoa. And I, I immediately got to go write it down yes. somewhere because yeah. I, I don't want to yeah. forget anything. And the other thing I find, and I, I know when those happen to me, I know it's the Lord. Yeah. And those, when they happen to me, they almost always begin to mirror reality. Mm -hmm. Like what will happen is, is there'll be something in the dream and something in the dream will begin to mirror and it'll begin to unfold Unlock. in my own life. Like I have one that I had in July of 2015 and it is still unfolding in my life. It's yeah. just this, this, this unfolding of this dream and this house and the yeah. house of God. And so the other thing I find is important is, is being aware of what you feel and think in the dream. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's because I would always focus on the factual things. Well, you know, cause uh -huh. like, you must because be analytical. Well, yeah, I'm extremely analytical. Yeah. And so like, I would just, you know, cause like in the, you, for you and I, it, it, you know, it's God that we understand a dream. <laughs> cause like with Joseph, like the Pharaoh's dream, he was like, mm -hmm. we had seven fat cows swallowed up by, he's standing behind the, by the river Nile. Right. Mm -hmm. He, seven fat cows are swall swallowed up by seven skinny cows. He awakes. All right, and he goes back to sleep, and then this, he's standing once again by the River Nile. Seven, seven uh, stalks of, of grain right, on yeah. one stalk, fat ones swallowed up by seven skinny ones. Right, and then Joseph comes in and says, "Those dreams are one and the same." All right, you're gonna have seven years of plenty, by, 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 followed by seven years of fam yeah. famine, and he's telling him for he's preparing him for what's coming. Right, All right? and really, what it was is God was just protecting his own people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. really, even though they were in slavery, they, right. they were in bondage. Mm -hmm. He was st his hand of covering that cloud by day and for the pillar of fire by night was yeah. still there. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, right, yeah. and and even looking at that, you know. Um, the fact that he, it happened twice, the two dreams happened twice. That's mm -hmm. a principle in Genesis 42, where it talks about if it, this dream happens twice, you know, it will be, it will surely come to pass. The things that we look for, um, we look for things that happen, um, you know, in pairs and, you know, we, we put that principle that this is going to happen and it's going to happen quickly. It's surely to come to pass. Uh, why? Mm -hmm. Because there are prophecies that are surely to come to pass and there's some that are conditional. What so are you going to do? You know, mm, yeah, and I mean, yeah, your own choices can right. can stop. Right. Yeah. So is that the same? Would like if somebody has a recurring dream, then mm -hmm. like is so a recurring dream is mo mainly we, we start to pick them up in early on and they're built out of fears and things that are instilled into our hearts. And uh, at, when we're younger and they kind of reappear when we get go through stressful situations, um, I would tell people, pay attention to what you're going, what's, what's going on in your journal out, what's going on in your daytime that, you know, when you, when you had this dream. I'll give you an example. My reoccurring as a child was I'm running and running, running, and I'm running through molasses. Something's chasing me, and I just can't run fast enough. I can't get away. And uh, John Paul told me one time in the office, he goes, well, why don't you just turn around and t ask it what, it's, what it wants? 
well, that's, that's, that's like that's lucid a, dreaming. It's though. lucid dreaming, which yeah. is a gift. I don't let, yeah. you know, don't I mean, there's Christians other, there's or, the dark side of that as well. Yeah. But well, yeah. there's the dark side of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's always, so it's, the, that's the, the problem with Christians. Yeah. Down. yeah. It's yeah. all yeah. it is. They just yeah. So what, what is lucid dreaming then? So lucid dreaming is when you um, are able, you're aware that you're awake. It's a gift. Actually, uh, there are people who are gifted in this and then you can actually work your way up into it to know dreaming is more reality than this right here. Yeah. Our yeah. dreams are way more reality than all of that. This is just manifested through thought, right? So dreams are a lot more reality. So we can interact in our dreams. Um, he was very lucid the other night and I kept, I kept, he was trying to get a letter and from his dream, he was talking in his sleep. He was trying to get a letter. So I jokingly, I was like, did you get the letter? Cause I wanted to know what the letter said before he woke up and like in the morning and didn't remember it. So I'm like, do you get the letter? And then blues clues theme came on. Yeah. We just got a letter. We just got, and he's like, and he pushes me like, no, cause he's still there. And he could feel himself coming back to earth, you know? And he's like, no, like he didn't want to talk, but he was like pushing me. Like I, I'm still battling, you know, I'm still trying to get this letter. And so, I've been in similar situations in my dreams. Something's waking me up, yeah. and I'm trying to go back. Yes, yeah, yeah Like yeah. it's funny because I yeah. every now and then I get a lucid dream. It's pretty rare, mm-hmm. but it does every now. Usually, it's exposing sin in my life. Yeah, like well, usually that's what it's like. God pointing to like sin. Mine is there. I'm lucid and I'm interpreting the dream in the dream. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah. Like I just some I, reason. I'll, tra- I'll trade both of your lucid dreaming for mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He mine wars. is always war. war. It's like man. always I mean, war. He wars. I see. I'm talking into the mic now. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was warring. You know, um, going back to your your yeah. the two dream the two the the Pharaoh's dream. Mm-hmm. You know, John Paul had us take all of the dreams of Bible and and um, apply the Jungian and the Freudian theories to all of them. And they didn't work. They didn't no, work they won't at all. Work. No. They didn't. Now here's where it gets trippy. So people would ask me, "Well, how come you know I went to the psychic and they interpreted my dream and it was like right on, mm. uh, you know?" Felt like, and I've watched uh, psychics interpret dreams and the people start crying and walking away. And here's the thing: is that it's a familiar spirit. It's not. Well, it's not even that. It's that that you can interpret a dream psychologically. I see people do it all the time. Yeah, you can. I have to be careful that when I'm tired, not to interpret dreams because I can logically think about symbols. Right. Mm-hmm. That's just a young in yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just I'm just doing it. There's no spirit in that. And Amen. I can I can yep. tell you it's not because I tell people all this all the time. If you don't have the aha moment of God, it comes keep in a searching. Moment. It comes in a flash. Yeah, yeah. Like keep like, searching. Do not leave a dream without the ah aha. That's what that meant. Wait. From me, from them, from anyone. You keep searching until you get that moment. And so, um, you know, when I was watching this, this one psychic, uh, and, and it was amazing at how well, cause we go to new age festivals and stuff like that. We've led work, um, we've led teams in Jackson Square amongst all the, the, um, warlocks and the psychics and stuff. Um, and it's, it's amazing, but they can only go so deep. They'll get it, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's the reason he said, don't go, don't look for diviners is because they could. They could, mm-hmm. and, but the thing is that they're missing, and this is what I tell New Agers all the time, or I, when I'm ministering to someone who's in New Age, um, I will tell them, there's a higher revelation. Mm-hmm. It's not that you're not getting it. Mm-hmm. You're getting it, but there is That's something good. higher. There is a yeah, high, and they're a, all about the, the ne- getting to that next level. There's, how do you do that? How, do you, how did you, we <laughs> went to a psychic, and I was with a, a friend of mine, and we sat down, and she goes, I'll, you read me, and I'll read you. Mm-hmm. And, and he was like, okay. So he was like, and I just feel like you're, you know, you're having trouble in your marriage, said anyone who was married. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like you're this, this. And it was, she, he was, she was like, okay, that was, that was pretty good, vague, but good. And then she just read his mail. Uh, I see a blue car broken down on the side of the mm-hmm. highway, and he, it happened that morning. And he was like, okay, I'm done. Like he just got up. He's like, I'm done. She goes, because there is a higher revelation. Yeah. And that is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. you know? And so, so it's not that they're going to these psychics and it's not like they're going to um, hear, not hear something because there's a real enemy going and tell them this and tell them this. But do you think that, okay, so do you think psychics, even their, re- any of their readings, whether it's dreams or whatever, do you think it's just general information? Like, or do you uh, think some... that like it's, I mean, because like I've, you know, I used to be really into it and like, I, this is before I was a Christian people. Um, so, and like Sylvia Brown, I felt like I was like, Oh my God, she knows. She's like my mom. She knows everything. <laughs> yeah. But then I started lo- noticing a pattern 
Yeah. And it was always like the same mm-hmm. type of people that she would take questions from. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I think it was like, yep. and she would, I think she gathered a lot of information just from their appearance. Um, uh, isn't that what most prophets do? I mean, I, I would say, I Come would say now. there's not necessarily <laughs> having the understanding that there's, that's not necessarily, there is a godly way to do that. Yeah, there is. Because the Lord, everything is mirrored. One, one time, right. this one time this woman was spoken with, like sometimes God speaks to me, like I was standing in this church and, um, I was standing in its foyer and the Lord spoke to me and says its foundation mm-hmm. is breaking. Its foundation is not on me. And I, and I just, I kind of like, you know, you, you hear this guy, sometimes you think it's your own head, you know, yeah, you hear yeah, your voice. Yeah. And all of a sudden I looked and the, this crack. Yeah, it's a physical manifestation the, of the spirit. And it was literally a crack in the wall where I could mm-hmm. see through the other side of the wall and, I, and the bricks that I pulled in. I knew it was, a, it was an industrial building and it was a new building. Mm-hmm. And, that's, I, and I, being a contractor, I have something, I know a little bit about codes for industrial buildings. Yeah, yeah. All right, and I know, I know that that shouldn't be for that kind of building. That concrete is made to take some weight, some yeah. heavy equipment. It's industrial, but they, were, they have this, they're building, their, their church is in, in an industrial building they rented out. And at that same time, I was just kind of like, what? And right, right as I walked by, right as I, I, I kind of was looking at this crack, this woman walks by me in the church, and she has these high heels on. And the Lord speaks to me, her foundation, she, she's, not, she's not on a firm foundation. Mm. And, and I was like, what does that mean? Is that just for her, Lord? Is that for, for every? And I think it's a general rule, all right, that there's some truth in that. Yeah. Right? There's a general rule because she, she's separating herself from as God created her, right? God right. put her feet on firmly on the ground, right? Right. She's not accepting herself as God created her. And I'd say that it's a lot of fashion, not just women, everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just picking there because she's the one God used to yeah. speak to me. Mm-hmm. But um, there ain't nothing wrong with fashion now. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's not. There's not. But there, Said there me is. me and Kevin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, but I, I was just saying that to yeah, say... Yeah, it's a physical manifestation of the spirit realm. Everything yeah. in the spirit realm will manifest itself in the natural. You just got to have the Positive eyes Positive or negative. It. You have the eyes You do. And, it. It, yeah. and again, that's a parabolic language. If mm-hmm. I tell, teach people in our group, if, if this were a dream, what would it mean? When things are unusual or out of place or, you know, if a yellow ball rolls across a room, that if things are, you know, it's, I've had a friend of mine who uh, got into a car accident and on, and she calls me, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, I just got into a car accident." Now, most people would be like, "I just got into a car accident, my insurance and all of this." Upset, and, but she's not excited. not my not my <laughs> class, right? They're like, "I just got into a car accident," and it was with a Titan on Hebron, this road Hebron, and his name was Jesus. You know, because it's like God speaks to us through anything if we're willing to listen. Mm-hmm. He sp- he is speaking. People go, oh, "I don't know how to hear from God." I'm like, "Really?" Because he won't be. Qu- you know, he's talking yeah. all the time. Yeah. Wait, let me let me finish what you told me to do last week and before, we're, you know, we're on to the next thing. And so it's, um, it's just te- teaching people how to, to enter into that. Eyes how do we, yeah, yeah, how do we enter into this? Um, how do we enter into this parabolic language? And so, yes, there is a positive understanding of, because I had someone come into a church, they had a half jacket on, and she came up, and the Lord spoke to me and said, she's uh, half, she's un- halfway uncovered. She's uncovered. Mm-hmm. Um and I brought it to her. I was thinking it was our husband. And I said, I feel like the Lord's telling me that you, um, you're not fully covered. And she's like, yeah, it was our pastor. It wouldn't let her pract- walk in her, what she wanted to do as in her gifting. And, but that manifested through her. We manifest, we will manifest it. We will absolutely manifest that which is in our heart. And so there yeah. is a, an aspect of that. However, going back to, you know, the psychics and, and, you know, just being able to interpret dreams from the Freudian and Jungian theory is that we just go deeper. And in fact, you know, we study to show ourselves approved. He can interpret dreams, too, at a level because he doesn't study it all the time. I've spent my my adult life in this and I don't really teach on anything else. I mean, I can. Um, I just Typically, this is what I, my my study has been, so I can go pretty deep, right? But that's not to say I'm better. It's just to say that I studied it, and so I my goal is to teach people how to interpret dreams because there's only so many people, right? And there's a lot of people having dreams, and nobody. No, the Bible doesn't say, "Oh, by the way, you know, I'm going to pour out my spirit, and every, all these people are going to um, dream dreams." And so I'm like, "But what about people raise, raising people up to interpret? That's our goal." But I yeah. will interpret dreams for um, leaders and stuff because they're busy about other things, you know. So we got about ten minutes left. You want to get some dreams? Do you have a dream you want to share? 
Do you, she, do you have a dream that you want? I'm yeah. asking you if you have a dream. I don't have one. I, I, really? Okay. I have lots of dreams. Yeah, you have lots, um, yeah. I and I, I, I need to have one dream journal. My problem is I just write it down wherever I have a yeah, pen yeah, and paper I, or my phone. Way. And so then, I'm, then I'll go on looking for it. Matter of fact, before I left, I was like looking for them. I was like, where? I grabbed. Yeah. I, I have a few. And um, I have one I'll probably run by you after yeah. this because it, it involves some well-known names. Yeah. And I don't want to... But um, this is this dream is one that happened to me. And this is uh, I'm not trying to th- I'm, I'm honestly trying to figure out what dream I want to I want to um, do live. I want to do live because mm-hmm. yeah. some of them I have the understanding of. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, this dream right here, and I'm gonna change the name of uh, one of the people involved. Let me find the uh, dream because I had it up, but uh, just say he or she. Because you can't yeah. really change the name because names are critical in dreams. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, going back to what you were yeah, talking about um, with uh, people as as believers, I have seen someone extreme, you know, known a very known prophetic person get extremely detailed, and I know for a fact that he was operating with a deceptive spirit. It was a, a it was a it's, it was a witchcraft spirit, and it was scary how accurate he was and that's why we have to be very careful who we're lending an ear to Mm -hmm. we have to know the character and the nature not just because they showed up at your church and your church approved them Mm. because i've seen this you know i I specifically have someone in mind that that i know because i've had interactions over the last you know eight years with them that they are absolutely operating in a dark spirit and they're well known in churches all over and they're crazy accurate no i've seen them no, and it I know is a, scary uh, yeah. but again that's why we have got you've got to know the don't don't I, I try to tell people you know i was in poland and i said don't just have the next big voice come down don't have the next bit do what god's called you to do with this voice we become schizophrenic know who you're lending an ear to know their character know their walk don't just trust them because your church approved of them yes because churches don't have the wherewithal to know the character and stuff Mm -mm. unfortunately leadership churches don't too right typically i mean right yeah i i 100 with you in that go ahead so this dream i had on uh, in november of 2017 and um it's one of a series of dreams like this but i'll just give this one I was in my grandparents' house, my father's side, uh, in their old house. I was in the back room. I had an old photo of my grandfather in my hand. Also in the photo was one of the children, I believe was my aunt, but actually this part's fuzzy, my, my dad's sister. I don't, know, I don't know who it was. I, uh, I recognized that there was s- demonic activity in the room, but chose to ignore it. I then tossed the photo on the bed. Then I thought to myself, no, I need to address this now. So I turned to the photo saying, um, so I turned to the photo lying on the bed and said, Jesus, but no sound came out of my mouth as though there was something right in front of me, my nose blocking it. It was uh, it was like a deadening. Have you ever been in a room where there's like a deadening of sound? Like you, you like at Lockheed Martin, there's this this test room. They do things, and you can mm-hmm. say something in the room, and it, they, the walls absorb, absorb the sound. Mm-hmm. So no matter how loud you yell, you can't hear yourself in your own ear. Yeah, yeah. it was like that. Mm-hmm. It was it was like this thing that was almost touching my nose, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it in that. So let me find where I was in the dream. Um, but no no sound came out of my mouth, um, as though there was something right in front of my nose blocking it was um, it was the antithesis of sound coming out of my mouth. They, just the op- I don't know how to explain yeah. it, the antithesis. Yeah. Um, I knew there was a demon right in front of me, my face, that I could not see blocking my words. Yeah. That's the end of the dream. Okay, so we want to go back to, we want to anchor the dream down. Mm-hmm. We want to anchor that dream down and w- because where you're at in a dream is critical to knowing what the dream is about because dreams are so out there. I mean, and, and we don't want to wrap it around things so we, that they don't belong around. So we want to anchor that dream down and we're specifically talking about you being inside of your grandfather's house. Okay, so we're, this room, is a lineage yeah. issue. Yes. It's a lineage it is. issue. And, um, and going into the back room, so we asked the question, why the back room? These are called compare and contrast questions. These help unlock symbols. Why the back room and not the kitchen? Why the back room and not the 
uh, foyer in the front room, right? So the back room, um, depending on, did you spend a lot of time? That's in that? where my brother and I spent most of our time. If it was like not, it was raining so it's or something outside. It was yeah, that was kind of where we would hide out and we could, you know, not be bothered by our grandparents. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had those houses too. Yeah, those rooms too. They won't find us in here. Um, and so it was familiar to you. Something that's familiar to you. Uh, you pick up a photo and, and this is talking about past photos represent things that have happened in the past. That's why we take mm -hmm. photos so we can remember them. It's a black and white photo. Mm -hmm. So we can yeah. remember that. And it was, um, and again, you're, you, you're kind of fuzzy on the details, but it's, it's, you think it's one, it's one of the children. It was one of, it could have been my father, like in the dream, it was fuzzy. It wasn't like, it was like, is it, so it could have been my father. It could have been my, I could actually, actually the photo is a real photo we have. And mm -hmm. in the photo, it's my aunt mm -hmm. sitting in his lap but as in the girl. dream in you the dream were, thought that it was your dad in the dream it was like just one of the siblings it mm -hmm. could have been my uncle my aunt or my dad it, it, but in the it wasn't really clear as to who it was right so now we've got yeah. three generations appearing in the dream we have mm -hmm. the grandfather the house we have um the next generation yeah right remembering the next generation and then, and then what you're dealing with yeah. right and i would tend to say probably that your family wasn't um really in tune with confronting um evil things probably didn't have a lot of um you didn't put a lot of and and you have a better understanding in your lineage than they did mm -hmm. of confronting evil things and and so the very thing that shows up next is that there's a demon in the room and you try to say jesus which is very very a lot of people have this um he used to have it when we got married he would i could hear him trying to call out for jesus that and it was like a lot he couldn't say it it's and like this thing around your neck right yeah, here it is yeah, and it's an encounter it. it's an actual yeah. encounter 100%. the enemy ha comes to shut your voice down and take your land those are its two two things that is really after your voice and your land the voice is creative the land is your is your dominion promise yeah and yeah and so um if it can get you to shut down so we teach people you know this is a lot of these dreams are sh showing you how to war in the spirit he does a lot of his warfare in dreams not so much in prayer like in morning prayer stuff but it's mainly in dreams he does a lot of warfare um but it was a progressive to where now now he doesn't have that right because mm -hmm. he's learned to use his authority in dreams because you're actually having an encounter and this yeah. really has to do with your lineage and you understanding um the things that you you get the positive things that you gained from you know that those two generations but then now what are you doing with that that and you t and god's really just kind of confirming that you have the ability to um to you know your authority you know your authority and yeah but then you have to ask the question why did you lay the photo down on the bed mm -hmm. your authority comes from your intimacy Mm, yeah yeah it's true it's what's, it's intimacy it's crazy about that dream is i woke up from it and it was like three in the morning and i couldn't get back to sleep so i put my shoes on and decided to go for a jog mm -hmm. and i walked outside and i lived in at the time i was in the middle of fort worth where like coyotes would not be a common thing yeah. and this is the biggest coyote I've ever seen in my life sitting in my front yard it's sitting, sitting right next to my truck oh yeah like, he just stood there he, and i was probably as far from him, from you to him as coyote and coyotes don't do that Yikes. And I just kind of, just kind of looked at me, and I sat there and thought about. It. I th I was like, "What is this thing?" I knew it was the Lord. So I, I just kind of ignored it, and I kind of chased it off. She's down the road, and it ran off. And I went on my jog. And as I went on my jog, and I was thinking about this dream, all of a sudden I had this vision of a of a white snake wrapped around my mm -hmm. arm. I saw it, and on the dream, it's a white python. Yeah. And um, and what's funny is I've been having issues with this hand yep. where it would fall asleep on me, and yep. the python Jesus. constricts. That's right. It's a physical manifestation yeah. of what's happening. And in the somehow spirit. that snake is related to this dream, and I don't Absolutely. understand it. Yeah, and yeah. That, and that coyote, that wolf. Absolutely. You know? yeah. So, and we just had a dream, a dream like that recently when, after we came back from the. And we know you generally will have a lot of these dreams after you've done like an impacting in the kingdom. You've impacted the kingdom in some sort of way. You'll typically have. Um, a lot of warfare happen in the next two days. You got to pay attention to your dreams and don't, you know, uh, war be, protect your spirit. Yeah. Um, but he, we had a dream where uh, the same night he was warring and, and trying to get this letter, I had a dream that there were flies and I had this, these flies that were literally in the house that night. We came home from an event and we're like, what in the world are these flies doing in the house? They weren't from anything or with anything. But in the dream, mm -hmm. this the flies in the dream were... Um, <laughs> would you like me to repeat it? <laughs> um, these flies were flying around a dead baby. 
You know, so so mm. people have to pay attention because the the closer we walk with Jesus, the more intimate we are with Jesus, our dream life and our reality life begin to intermingle a lot. Mm. The the veil gets very thin between that, and that's what happened with you no. is your veil got very thin. No, I, I'll wake up with entities in the room with me pretty regularly. Yeah. Like yeah. I I've seen mm-hmm. like I've I've had them attack me with physical yeah. bodies. Right, yeah. it's incubus and succubus spirit, and not those. There's well, they're different. not always sexual. They're not oh, always well, sexual. I mean, I woke, up, I woke up with a witch in the room with yeah. her once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, yeah, but yeah, as I've had all that, but yeah. Anyway, that was just a question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, Appreciate that's that. an interesting. It's kind of the direction I was going with the dream. I just yeah. wanted to bounce it off somebody. Yeah. Live on, on camera. Yeah, sure. I mean. I, I, don't, I don't let her interpret my dreams and tell, tell them why. Because <laughs> all of his dreams mean the exact same thing. Spend more money on your wife and take her out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I can't figure out why. So I wake up and I That's tell her I have a dream prophecy. and I'm like, man, if I just. <laughs> I'm like, they all mean the same thing. I don't know what's happening. Why Husband, love your wife. So, so, so take her to church. the mall. Yeah. So, I, so I often have, you know, pretty vivid dreams and then I look at her and I was like, Man, I wish I knew a really good he dream does. interpreter. He does. He wakes up from a dream. He goes, I sure wish I knew some dream interpreter. I'm like, yeah, me too. I just can't. I try to refrain, refrain from um, interpreting dreams that I have an invested interest in. It I keeps agree me with safe. That. It I keeps, agree with that. you know, so I don't, sweet. you know, if I, if you work for me, typically, now if I, if it's pretty clear what the dream means, but if I remotely feel anything that I can wrap that around because I have an interest in it or it just keeps everybody safe, you know? Yeah, yeah. And unless and the Lord just gives it to you, it. sometimes the Lord just gives it to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, and you just have the understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just take a lot of time with his because I don't want, you know, I want to go shopping and no. <laughs> I'm just I, actually, I'm not a shopper, but. Well, well um, Amy, thank you. Amy has a wealth of knowledge. She is. Yeah. Thank you. If you don't follow her, you need to follow her on Facebook and Instagram. What is your Instagram? Yeah. Amy Coelho. Oh, what is your Facebook? Amy Coelho. Yeah. She's so she's very original. Her her social media is Amy Coelho. It's Amy Coelho. <laughs> you Google it. It's Amy Coelho. C O E L L O. Yes, which is his last name. It is. <laughs> he gave it to me. That's right. But um, thank you. I would love to have you back yeah. one of these days, and so we can talk about the Jezebel spirit. Yeah, I would love that because and the Matthew eighteen protocol. Yes, yes. that is very um, absolutely. That is very much needed That's in the church. Good. And yeah, so yeah. everybody go follow Amy. She's great. She's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So is her husband, yes. Robert. Thank this you. is my first time I've ever met him, and I love him. And yeah, thank so you for is tuning he invited in. back. Yeah, he can oh, come back anytime. <laughs> oh, good, good. He right he's a he's a worship leader, right? He's he a, worship a worship leader. Guy. Yeah, and he's all about music. So yes, yes. We might have him come back and talk about that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, he would love that. Um. He but actually yeah. he actually writes social injustice music for human trafficking and yeah. sexual abuse sexual abuse victims. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So he's got some great music out there. So where can we hear his music? On YouTube. On all the and so Spotify. The, Spotify, and iTunes, iTunes, CD Baby. And how do we find CD you? Baby. Robert C O E L L O. Robert Coelho. Wow. They're very original. We are. <laughs> we try to keep, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> But thank you, everybody. Don't forget, tune in. We're here every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, for right now. You know, it might change one of these days, but that that's it for right now. Yeah. To me, 6 to 8 is too early. I would prefer later, but yeah, so we'll see. But um, thank you, Jonathan, for coming well, and you. being a co-host yeah. this evening. I look forward to doing it again. It's going to be yeah, fun. It's fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. We keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. me yeah. too. Yeah, y'all are tough interviewers. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for logging in. Also, re- be, please remember to like my Facebook page, Legit with Kevin Witt, and also to like me and subscribe on YouTube. And it's also Legit with Kevin Witt. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You didn't say- so pure it'll kill me for sure this longing for you will be the end of me i search through this world but i found no cure no earthly thing can 
set me free like you set me free